John Little here for SwasuAthletics.com. We are previewing Southwestern Oklahoma State's first game of the 2014 season. Their football opener at Harding University on Saturday. We'll talk to Riley Claiborne here in a moment, the starting quarterback for the Bulldogs. But first of all, we have three-time all-conference performer at the defensive line spot, Devin Benton, with us. Devin, it's great to catch up with you before the season. Thanks for your time. Yes, sir. No problem. Thank you. Absolutely. And uh, we could talk to you at any point during the season because your uh, impact on the team is, is so great. You talked about in the offseason, I think I saw an interview that you did with Doug, about uh, how the uh, defense has been so up-tempo here in the fall with uh, Coach Gibson. Talk a little bit more about that, if you would. Well, Coach Gibson and Coach Torbert, they brought like a, almost like a new style of play. Mm -hmm. And it's uh, very relentless and extremely fast. Um, I was used to it in high school, and I'm just not getting back in the, in the, you know, the grind of it, but I love it. I mean, they're crazy, and I, I love playing for them, so. And I know it's a little bit different going into, you know, the only ball game where you're going to see a triple option offense. So you guys have to kind of change things up uh, right off the bat. But as far as the, the base stuff goes, is there anything uh, really crazy that you're asked to do in this defense that you weren't before? Or is it pretty much just, hey, go get back there in the, in the, behind the lineman as fast as you can? Get hands on and play football. Okay, okay that's, that's it. You can do that against any team. As long as you get your hands on and play football, we block you. Absolutely. And run to the ball. No doubt. Talking with Devin Benton, Southwestern Oklahoma State defensive tackle. You've got some new guys around you on the line. How is that shaping out right now? Well, I, I mean, they've been with me as long as I've been here. So I've been around them really my, my whole time here at Swasu. And uh, I'm just glad to finally, like, start with them. You know, I guess, like, yeah. you know, finish my – I came in with them and I'm finishing my – years here with them, so it should be fun. And I, and I love those guys from Jake to, to you know, Horn to Collier, all of them, you know. So. And we got new guys in that I um, never played with from, um, just from transfers and freshmen who we're relying on. So that, that should be interesting. I can't wait to see how those guys play. And they'll be good. How big is that nose guard spot for you as wanting to be the three technique guy? How big is it to have a an influential guy there, well, whether it be Follis, whether it be Navajo Smith, those guys that have stepped up. You know, Clinton obviously could probably slide over and play opposite you some. But how important is that position to, to what you do to, to make you effective, I guess? Extremely important because if he gets out of his gap, then I have to somehow, you know, play my gap and the gap he was supposed to play and make sure, you know, the backer's okay. And, you know, it's just, you know, everybody has to, do that one eleventh and be sound and it makes everything more easier. But you know, if I but it's the same thing. If I get out of the gap then I hold my other guys, you know, so so it, and that's really being stressed a lot is everybody playing that one eleventh. And I got and I'm you know, I'm a victim of it too because I am a I'm a type of guy that if if like nothing's happening the way I want it to or anybody wants it to, then I kinda just start going, you know, and I have to calm myself down and, you know, just play my, my spot and just do what I'm supposed to do. Absolutely. Everybody's got to do their job. As far as this off season has gone, have you treated it any differently being the summer before your senior year? Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I think I only took off three days, and that was because I had some money. So, but other than that, I was working out from when I woke up to, to when I went to sleep, basically. I mean, I, wasn't, I, I didn't stop. Any particular part of your body that you were trying to focus on this summer, or is it just you know generally getting stronger and faster in every area? Oh yeah, stronger and faster in every area. I couldn't I couldn't say oh this my bench press is okay, so I'll just no nah, I was everything had to get better. It had to be everything. Well, let's talk about playing against Harding just a little bit. From your position, what are the challenges that going against that offense, which you've done now several times in your career, mm -hmm. what are the challenges that it presents for you personally? Well, for me, it'll help me, um, well not help me, it'll force me to play with my hands and eyes way more because they do a lot of cuts and then they cut from different ways and this guy can catch it from this way. So, you know, I just got to, you know, keep my head on the swivel, you know, just play football with my hands and just, you know, I, I don't want to say slow down because I cannot play slow. If I play slow, it's very noticeable, but play more aware, I guess, so to speak. 
Mm -hmm. you know. What's the one thing that you got to be aware of in their offense, uh, you know, in order to be effective? What's that first thing? Uh, not the dive. Uh, I'm, I'm dive all day, so the fullback is the ball. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, I know that uh, that uh, Romo's a great player on that side as far as the fullback goes, and that'll be a great matchup, Romo Westbrook against Devin Benton. There's no doubt about that. Devin, we really appreciate your time. Thank you so much, yes, and uh, good luck on Saturday. Yes, sir. Thank you. John Little back for SwasuAthletics.com with a player profile. So we've got Riley Claiborne here, golden hair, the boy next door, so to speak. He's got a golden arm to match as well. Riley's been named the starting quarterback for the Southwestern Bulldogs this year. Uh, Riley, as you went through summer camp, you know, into fall camp, and you're trying to win that job, and then finally it was kind of official that uh, you were going to be the, the starter in week one. What was the emotion for you? Um, the emotion was, I mean, indescri indescribable. Um, I, I mean, I've worked for this for ever since I was seven. Ever since I've been playing football, I've been – it's been a goal in my life alone just to play, be able to play college football and not only to play but to start for a team. And uh, I'm extremely blessed to be a part of this program and be a part of this team. Um, it's, it's really, I mean, not, not a single word can describe my emotion um, just from all the hard work that I've put in the last two years here at this program and then going spring ball to summer to fall camp. Um, and the, uh, one thing that really helped me the most was the encouragement from my teammates. Uh, everyone around me just rallied around. And it really wasn't even just me. It was the other quarterbacks who, were, who, I, were, who I was competing against. But um, just really all of them being encouraging and not really putting you down. And kind of speaking of that, Riley, you got some great competition from those guys as well. You weren't necessarily the maybe the favorite to win the job coming into the summer. I don't know. I, what do you think you did better? What did you improve upon even in, in those last few months in order to uh, be the number one choice? Um, I think I really focused on um, the vocal aspect. Mm -hmm. Coach Day and I, I mean, we've talked about it ever since I've been here. How I've been, I was always vocal. I mean, he saw it in high school in me, um, and then he saw it even down on the scout team my freshman year. I was being vocal, and then whenever I got up, and you know, Dustin Senna was here last year, and then I, I just kind of got away from that. But he told me that um, for for those guys to follow me, I needed to be more of a vocal leader, um, and I think I really focused on that this fall, and I think it played out just fine for me. We're talking to Riley Claiborne here on a player profile, and when we get into the player profile aspect of it, we go into your past a little bit. Uh, Bethany High School for you, of course. I remember, I think, watching you play on ESPN back in the day against Heritage Hall. I remember that game. Um, tell me a little bit about your earliest memories, though, of, uh, of throwing around the pigskin. Where, when did you know that you know, you were pretty good at the quarterback thing and that that's something you wanted to do? Ever, I mean, ever since I started football, I was my dad was my head coach in little league football. So, ever since then, just because of me get, being able to know the playbook and him being able to work with me outside of practice, really kind of gave me a better edge to be the commander of the offense. Um, and really, it, it's kind of funny because all growing up, people doubted that I could play quarterback because I only played quarterback because my dad was the coach. And um, all throughout, I mean, middle school, I got to middle school, and then that's whenever my coach in high school, Reagan Ruff, he was the middle school coach when I was in middle school. And then whenever I got moved up to high school, he got promoted to the head coach of the high school. So he worked with me for seven straight years, really working on my mechanics, really working on my um, the mental aspect of being a quarterback, and really as kind of him and my dad have both really formed me into the quarterback that I am today. Um, and I mean, I'm really blessed for those two, having them in my life. And for you, you're not only involved just in the game on the field, you do some things off the field as well, I understand, um, with, uh, with the camp, those sort of things to kind of get back to the community. Tell us about that. Yeah, the, uh, the last, we didn't do it this past summer just mm -hmm. because I was so overwhelmed with, I mean, competing, trying to start. Um, and just kind of different things here and there. But the last, the three years before that, I did run a uh, non-profitable camp 
Um, it was free to all the kids, and we really just, I, I like showing, giving back to the community that, that showed me so much support throughout the uh, four years of my high school career. And um, I mean, we actually had a pretty good turnout. We had, the first year I just did a quarterback camp, and there were, there were about 30 to 40 kids there. And then the second year I opened it up to all positions, and we had about 150, and then the year after that, we had about 200. And I mean, we had we had some guest speaker. I mean, Chris Chamberlain, which played at Bethany, he came and spoke. I mean, he he went to Tulsa and then played in the league for a, a couple of years. But I mean, yeah. I mean, I just I love seeing the the kids' face whenever they come up, and then we introduce ourselves and the people who are at that camp that were helping me were also college athletes at different, like at SNU, and uh, we had a guy from OSU, just kind of different athletes that were there helping me. And uh, it, just, it just really brought a lot of joy to my heart seeing the uh, excitement on those kids. And even now, um, like I'll be at the YMCA working out or someone, and I'll see a kid walk in with my camp shirt on. And it's, it's, it's awesome seeing that. And my biggest thing was not only to help them on the field, but to help them off the field. Um, because some of those kids throughout Little League, they don't have the greatest uh, support, and I really wanted to be there for them um, and let them know that it's not all about football. Mm -hmm. Well, no pressure or anything, but is that something that you want to get back to uh, once you do have that time, once you feel a little bit more uh, open to do so? Definitely. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's definitely something that and also what I want to do in the future, hopefully next summer, is have one in the city, in Oklahoma City, and then also have one out here in Weatherford to give back to the kids out here and in Clinton and just the uh, community around here too. And what me and my dad have been actually talking about is doing a, a scholarship program um, through, not really sure about like who to go through because I do have um, one of my mentors in whenever I was in middle school he was the high school quarterback at Bethany and he really helped me out and this I think yeah, this summer he actually died of bone cancer so this season really is dedicated to him and what I really want to do is make a scholarship program through his name and give back to the people in Oklahoma City or someone that's going to Swanson maybe give them five hundred dollars or so to be able to help out with the school that's awesome, Riley. Really appreciate you joining us. Thanks so much, and uh, good luck on Saturday. Oh, thank you. That is Riley Claiborne, starting quarterback for the Southwestern Oklahoma State Bulldogs. Of course, playing Harding this Saturday, September the 6th, opening up on the road at Searcy. And that will be a 5 o'clock pregame show and a 6 o'clock kick on 95.5 The Coyote. John Little for SwassoAthletics.com.